Don't add the Thanos to that. We do have data yesterday. Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's a life we have and I want you to believe it. Alright, let's do Zoe part two. For somebody who is wondering what is the way, the way is God's kind of life. And that's the life I live. That's the life you live. John chapter 10, verse 10. It talked about the thief. John 10, 10. His mission is to steal, to kill, and to do what? Destroy. That's not my emphasis. We already know Mr. Thief. He doesn't have anything good for anyone. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and have it how? More abundantly. I've not come to give them half life. Give me amplified translation of that scripture. Amplified translation says, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Somebody shout, I will enjoy my life. I came that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance. So abundant life to the full till it overflow. On Thursday, we looked at the Holy Spirit as a life giver. You can't live this life without the Holy Spirit. And that's where the scripture, the second scripture from the month, Romans 8, 11 came from. If the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead, what will he do to you? If we give life, the word quicken means life. Our other scriptures use the word vitalize, supply life, revive, even the dead body. Let me go into another branch of this message. I have tagged it. This Zoe or God's kind of life is a life of glory. It's not a life of shame. It's a life of glory. It's not a life of defeat. It's a life of glory. Can you say the loudest you can? I live a life of glory. I live, life of glory. I live the life of glory. Life of glory. My, life My life is full, full. Of, glory. of glory. My life, My life is full, full. Of, favor. of favor. Can you say that one more time? My life. Is full, full of glory. Of glory. My, life My life is full, full of, favor. of favor. Hallelujah. Amen. That's my life. So the Zoe, the God kind of life we're talking about this month, that you will experience for the rest of your life is a life of what? Glory. It's not a life of shame. Second Corinthians 5 17. 2 Corinthians 5 17. If any man be in Christ. And I taught you before that to be in Christ is a place. If any man be in Christ, I've reached that place. No lack, no want, no shame. He's a new creature. And what happened? All things, the lady that used to fail is dead. Ah, yeah. The man who used to suffer disappointment is dead. Amen. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I'm born again. Sing it. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. 
I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. We are new creature. All things have passed away. So this new creation never existed. And that's why when people get born again and they still major in their past life, I know that that salvation experience is not real. Once you come to Christ, certain things about your life must pass away. Bad behaviors must pass away. Old life must pass away. Defeat life must pass away. Shame must pass away. Failure must pass away. Shout it this morning, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. What that means is you are a brand new person. The one who suffers shame is dead. We are new creature. All things are passed away. And how many things? All things have become new. A new person has emerged. And see, I'm giving you this new creature reality this morning to let you know that the new life you have is a life of glory. My life is full of glory. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 verse 30. See, Christianity is about life. Our preaching will be in vain if not for the life that Jesus gave to us. Romans 8 verse 30. Romans 8 verse 30. Those whom he predestinate. The word predestinate means I have foreordained your destiny. You are not a biological accident. There is something definite about you. And that is the spirit behind this of grace. We don't step into a new quarter without speaking ahead. Without forming and predestinate the quarter. For example, this quarter you are. One of the powerful words that came is that God is going to fast forward your blessing. Yeah. I, know, I know that person is saying the deepest amen. Yeah. Did you hear that during Days of Grace? He's going to bring forward blessing men for Q4 in Q2. Can you remember? That's your predestination. I, I am ordained to enjoy future blessings now. Things meant for 2024, they are being fast forwarded. Blessing meant in the future, push forward. And they are saying, Joseph, please enjoy. Amen. Now, Romans 8 30 says, Those whom God gave a destiny, good one, glorious destiny. And that person will say the sharpest amen. That's you. Then he also called. He didn't give them destiny and leave them. He said, hey, come near, my son. Stop going to clubhouse. <laughs> come near, my daughter. He, those whom he called, he declared them not guilty. I know you had a very bad past, but justified. That's what new creation reality is all about. He declared them, he justified. And those whom he justified, he said, your end will be what? Glory. He glorified. Not will glory, will be given glory. Look at that word, it's in the past. It what? Glorified. It glorified. See, your shining in life has been written, concluded. Yeah. Somebody shall set to. That's you. So this life you have as a child of God is a life of glory. No shame, no reproach. You know, it's a life of glory. No ridicule. Amen. No disappointment. Amen. Somebody is saying the sharpest amen. You are moving from glory to glory. Amen. This destiny you have, those whom he predestinated, we don't have better last year. We don't have better last yesterday. Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. We, we only move from glory to glory. That's the life we have. And I want you to believe it. 
oh, pastor, I'm going through a lot. I'm new in this church. You can't be in this church for three months. You do all the things you, we do. You come for days of grace. You fast every Thursday. Some people have been taking permanent exemption from the fasting. You tie it. You pay your first food. Story must change. Story must change. But a lot of challenges right now because probably you are new in this kingdom. But listen, the life you have, the life I have, the life we all have here is a life of glory. Amen. Those whom he called, he justified. The people he justified, he also glorified. He gave them glory. That's your end. When you write exam, it will end in glory. Amen. When you go for interview, it will end in glory. Amen. There is a business person say amen. This week, glory turnover. Amen. Glory customers. Amen. They will rush at you. Amen. They will come to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. It ends in glory. Did you hear the testimony this morning? Brother Michael said, I didn't know that this of grace is like this. He even recommended that we should be doing it every month. I mean, when you move from zero to six digits in your bank account, that's glory. And that was the first night of Days of Grace. The night of grace. And can you remember? God has beautified his life. That's our life. I can imagine Brother Michael who was empty before the Days of Grace. And this is just two weeks after Days of Grace's digits. What will happen at the end of this quarter to that brother? If he can sustain that life of glory. That's your life. Those whom he called, he justified. The people he justified, he also glorified. No one hearing me this morning will live a life less of glory. Amen. The louder your amen, the greater your glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. He talked about the nature of God, our calling in God. According to his divine power, he has given to us everything that pertains to life. Somebody shout it, I have everything I need. For life. Do you comprehend what you just said? How many things? Including that your expectation, you have it? You have your car? You have your house? You have the husband? Yes. You have the wife? Yes. You have the children? Yes. I have everything. That scripture says he has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us. That's our calling. What are we called into? Called to glory and virtue. And I told you before that virtue means excellence. We, that's our calling. When anything is short of glory, we say no. That's not the way. So way, God's kind of life is a life of glory. Verse 4 of that same scripture. Verse 4, he said, whereby he had given to us, had given to us exceeding, not small, great and precious promises that by these promises we may be a pareka, we are a sharer, partaker of his divine nature. That's the way. Div I have divine nature. Divine immunity. What happened to others does not happen to us. In one of uh, uh, the department or the group presentation, I think I was hearing Sister Aima share her testimony how she joined Island Church after the invitation. She said the first time she came into Island Church, he saw people who are not afraid of coronavirus. Can you, did you hear her? Because before she came, she was afraid. This thing they call COVID. But when she came, he saw the way I launched shame to COVID-19. <laughs> Amen. Those who are afraid are still putting those masks open. <laughs> Everywhere. The devil is a liar. And of, but you know, in the midst of COVID, God gave me a scripture, Psalm 91 verse 15. Remember? And I say after COVID-19. Honor. Have you not seen honor? In the midst of COVID-19, we move here. After COVID-19 is honor. I've seen all manner of blessing. 
House dedication in the midst of COVID-19. After COVID-19, his honor, his glory. And you have not seen anything. This Q2 will be the beginning of your breakthroughs. Not one, not two. Amazing turnaround story. Somebody this month of April, a good job is coming your way. This month of April. Don't believe what you hear. Some of these things are make up. COVID-19 was hyped. Was sponsored. I say it. Hype. The hype they give COVID-19 was too much. We have diseases that are deadlier. Killing people more than COVID-19. And people make money. Every, if you know the merchandise around COVID-19, big money. Now you come into Nigeria, now you have to do two COVID tests. Day two and day seven because you are not vaccinated. Is it a crime to say I don't want it? <laughs> okay. Where are we? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Somebody shout, I have divine nature. He has given to us everything that pertains life and godliness. We have this nature of God. Sickness can't stay on our body. Diseases can't stay on our body. Infirmity. That's, we have the, this life of God does not fall sick. We don't fall sick. Somebody but Pastor, what if you fall sick? What if we fall sick? Why are you making provision for negativity? Praise the Lord. You know, I used to talk very bold like this in the days I wrote professional exam. And somebody will come and say, what if you fail? And she said, dear, now this, I cannot fail. I cannot, what if you fail? What if I pass? Praise God. I, I have no room for failure. I, my... My circuit for failure is very short. If you test me with failure, it will just say, Pah! It, you, it will break immediately. There will be a spark. And I want you to react to anything negative because the life God has provided for us as a child of God is a life of glory. In this life, we don't beg. We don't borrow. And things work in our hands. I don't care who is angry this morning and say, Pastor, people should borrow now. Uh, leave provision for borrowing. I'm talking about Zoe. You know, on Thursday, I charged the people who came to church. I said, stop shouting, I have Zoe. Leave Zoe. When you are tempted to borrow, he said, no, this is not God's kind of life. Holy Ghost, make a way. Because the spirit of God is the spirit of life. This thing I need that want to embarrass me, make a way. And the Holy Ghost will, will make a way for you. Please, let it register in your spirit. In this kingdom, this God's kind of life. It's a life, we just read in 2 Peter, he said he has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So why will, you, why will you buy a car and be paying it for four years? When God can give you freely everything that pertains to life and God is. Can I hear amen? amen? It's your mentality. It's your ide ideology. I've seen people who get house for free, car for free, all expense paid, trip abroad for free. Somebody just did that two weeks ago in this church. And uh, she makes sure that she was already at the airport before calling me. Uh, he said, Pastor, sorry, I cannot attend Days of Grace. I am on my way to Dubai. All expense paid by my boss. He said, thank you for your prophecy. It has come to pass in my life. It is what you believe. And you see, unfortunately, uh, and I think we dealt with that in the month of March. God cannot help you beyond your belief system. He can, he can. He's the almighty God, but when you have imagination, it's until you pull down this stronghold. 
until you stop opening the bottom of the toothpaste. I can't help your prosperity. I can't. Can you remember that message? It can help you. That thing in your mind that always fights this kind of message. Pastor, leave provision for sickness. Leave provision for poverty. How can somebody not borrow? In fact, in the days I used to preach this among the accountants, they would say, how do we practice our profession? Minister of borrowing. No, sir. He has given to us everything that pertains to life. Let God be true and all accountants be liars. <laughs> he has given to us. Uh, sorry, we have so many accountants here this morning. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, man. But we are reading first, second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I'm not an accountant. Are you sure you know that? I'm a man of God, right? <laughs> and I'm speaking the word of God. Let God be true and all borrowers be liars. He has given to us everything that pertains to life. So when you shout, I have the way, live the way. When you are tempted to borrow, he said, no God, your life does not borrow. The gift of life you gave to me, we don't borrow in this kingdom. And say, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, lead me. Guide me. Make a way for me. See, there are levels in everything. If you start a business, maybe for business sake, you can take some borrowings to start your business. But there is another level where you would not... The business is already made. They ask you to come and eat. We operate at different levels. Permit me to say that this message of thou shall not borrow is God's mind to humanity. But you know, we come with our own ideology. You have just believed that, ah, the things I want to do, there's no way I can execute it without borrowing. So that mindset limits what God can do in your life. God can create a multi-billion business and they appoint you as the managing director, CEO. With options of shares. All they need is that they have watched your life. They saw integrity. And say, let's partner with this guy. With this guy, we are safe. He's a child of God. And we have also watched him. Whatever this lady touch, prosper. Can I hear if I am? <laughs> so I, I like your mindset to change this morning because identity crisis is a major problem in the body of Christ. When you don't know who you are. One young boy, uh, uh, Pastor Taiwo's son, preached a powerful message on Thursday. Did you hear that message? He said, if you have dominion, you have no business with low self-esteem. And I was wondering, where is this coming from? A lot of people are suffering from that low self-esteem. They are afraid. They are, it's a, if you have dominion, what are you doing with low self-esteem? No, that's not your portion. Dominion means you have authority over all. The things you are afraid of should serve you. Praise the Lord. So, this identity crisis many needs to deal with it. You have the nature of God. You have the life of God. You have God's kind of life. In fact, if you read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, it talked about our Father. Every time we pray, our Father who art in heaven, who is your Father? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, can you read that statement with me? The Father of glory. Stop there. Is the Father of glory. So you can't serve the father of glory and be living a shameful life. God is the God of glory. My father is the father of glory. So you can't have a father of glory and be a shameful son, a shameful daughter, a failure daughter. No. Your God is a God of glory. Your life should be full of glory. Your suffering is unnecessary. Because your father determined your source. 
And your father, we read this morning, is the father of glory. Where is shame coming from? Where is reproach coming from? Where is lack coming from? When your father is a father of glory, go back to your source. Enjoy this blessing from the Lord. John chapter 14, verse 9. I have a destiny of glory. John, John 14, verse 9. It says, anyone who see me has seen the Father. And remember, who is the Father? He is the Father of glory. Jesus said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. You have seen the Father of glory. John 17, 22. He now delegated that glory. He said, the glory you gave me, the glory which thou gave me, I have given them. Somebody shout, I receive it. So the glory God gave to Jesus, anyone who see me, you have seen the Father. And say, the glory you gave me, I have given them. In John 20, 21, as my Father has sent me, even so sent I you. And he didn't send us empty-handed. The same glory God gave him, he has given us. So he louder than your neighbor, than anyone in this hall, shout it, I carry glory. I carry glory. First John chapter 4, verse 17. As he is, so are we in this world. If Jesus carry glory, we carry glory. I carry glory. Look at the last statement. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So Romans 8.30 that says, those whom he justified, he also glorified. That's our destiny. That's our life. No wonder Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. He said he has made us, not going to make us. He has made us king and priest and we shall reign on the head. We shall king on the earth, rule on the earth. Anywhere you find islanders, they dominate. And if you have dominion, what is your business with inferiority complex? What is your business with low self-esteem? Powerful word. He has made us kings, queen, and priests unto our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Those who reign on the earth don't beg on the earth. I reign, I rule. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. See, I'm not trying to pretend. That's our life. We are stupid. Yes. We are not pretending. And we are not apologetic about it. We are just blessed. This is a blessed church. Blessed people. Special race. Holy people. Clean money. Shout it and bless. Amen. Qualify your blessing. Bless. How can you come to Island Church and all years to pendulously bless? And we have been saying it for years. And the more you ask to pendulous to your blessing, it begins to push you into a realm of stupendous word. Blessing that men cannot imagine. We talk COVID to death. No. I saw in the news yesterday, I, I, I can't remember that statistics. It said maybe 70% of Africans, they had COVID without knowing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, some of you, that time when the thing started, and you can't taste anything, say, yeah, hey, <laughs> I enter. <laughs> and all of things. But the devil is a liar. Stop paying attention to him. And that's why John 10, 10, but the A part is not our focus. Leave that. We know the job of the thief. You tell me the thief, he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I know. He said, but I have come that they may have life. Hey, let me major in that one. And I told you, I said, this is the way. Some people confess it, but it's still less than 1% in their life. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. The life-given spirit. 
And this morning he said, I have made you kings. I'm not going to make you. You are made. And you should reign. In your office, reign. In your business, reign. In your career, reign. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans 5 17. He said, by one man offense, the dead reign. Sin reign. He said, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Again, look at the word reign, reign, reign. Shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us that grace and privilege to reign in life. No more suffering. No more limitation. No more borrowing. No more begging. Somebody is hearing me this morning, you will never beg again. The debt you owe, supernaturally this April, God will supply your need. Your debt will not be more than this Q2. Every blessing spoken on this altar, begin to see them in your life now. Begin to see them in your destiny now. Your business will flourish. Your career will flourish. Student here, receive wisdom. Receive wisdom from above. How to experience this glory life? You need to increase in knowledge. Second Peter 1 verse 2 to 4. We read earlier. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. So I'm just going to say to you in this service, if you want to experience this glory life, this is the way, God's kind of life, you must increase in knowledge. Through the knowledge. If you read verse 3 of that same scripture, he said, according to his divine power, he has given to us everything that pertains to life and glory. Again, through the knowledge. You can't experience Zoe without knowing what God has made available for you. Lack of knowledge will make people act as beggars. We make them beg in the midst of plenty. They will be swimming in mighty big ocean and yet they are saying we are tasty. Where they are supposed to be drinking abundant. But because they can't see it. This is what lack of knowledge can do to a man. Psalm 82 from verse 5. He said, I said to you guys, verse 6, you are God. But verse 5, he said they don't know. Neither do they understand. So they walk in darkness and all the foundation of the earth, they are out of course. Why? They don't know. He said, verse 6, I told you, you are God. And all of you, you are children of the Most High. So verse 7 now bring the result of because of their lack of knowledge. He said, because they don't know who they are, what I have made available for them, they die like men. And they fall like one of the princes. Princes are people who you think are in high esteem. He said, but you are even more than a prince. I've made you kings to reign on the earth. But when you don't know, so they die like men. What happened to men should not happen to you. Can I hear amen from this church? They die like men and they fall like one of the princes. They are honorable men are thirsty. Isaiah 5 verse 13. They are honorable men are famished. Because of lack of, they are men of honor, but they are begging for water. Because of lack of knowledge. I put this knowledge thing for this service in two parts. Number one, you must know who you are. That is Sinai's song. I know who I am. You must know who you are and what God has made available for you to maximize the way. For example, leave this service. We don't borrow. I can't borrow. I have in excess everything I need for life. Is that person in church this morning? If you are the person, can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Then you begin to talk like that in family meetings. You begin. Now, there is no physical money in your pocket. But you call the things that be not. I'm not moved by what I see. In fact, in recent time, invisible money is what is ruling the world. How much is a Bitcoin now? I just want to know how much. How 
know, we have people who do that business here now. How much? How much in dollars? Huh? Don't tell me a wrong figure. I have an idea. How much? Forty-three thousand dollars. So it's a dollars. That's one Bitcoin, and it's invisible. <laughs> so if I have one Bitcoin, I have forty-three thousand. Dollars. One. My. Praise the Lord. You must know who you are and what God has made available to you. Second Corinthians five seventeen. You read that when you get home. The same scripture I use in opening this message. Number two, in terms of knowledge, you must know His word. You must know his word. I, uh, Hebrew 4 verse 12. The word of God. Hebrew 4 verse 12. The word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than two edges sword. The word of God is powerful. Amplified translation says the word of God is living and active. The word of God is operational. The word of God is errorless. If God said it, he can do it. What he says he can do. You must know the word. What has God said? I can talk boldly the way I talk because there are certain things I have seen in this material that have shown me of a stupendous wealth. Of a glorious future. This word is quick. Someone said, Ah, oh, but the Bible, the things of the spirit is slow. You know, on social media, you see all manner of yeah, yeah thing. They said, um, when people want to go into elective office in Nigeria, they should not be using Bible to swear. They should use things like Shongo, like thunder, to strike them. Ah, you don't know the word. That's why you talk like that. Yeah, yeah, talk. This one is quick. This word is quick. The reason is that, you know, in our kingdom, people don't know how the kingdom operates. They are always moved by what they see, what they feel, what they touch. The fact that you are breathing does not mean you are alive. In our kingdom. You can be seen like this and be blind. In our kingdom. So the fact that somebody is in an elective office and he's stealing money and you can still see him in the kingdom of heaven, they look at him, they look at his name, he's not in the book of life. So as far as they are concerned, he never existed. Praise the Lord. But people don't know. They thought that everything that uh, you see is what exists. There is a life, the invisible life. The word of God is quick. The word of God is living. The word of God is active. Please know the word. Study the word. When you know the word, living a Zoe life will be very easy. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word. Verse 4, in this word was life. This life was the light of men. And the light shine in darkness. And darkness, corona, evil, death, shame, HIV, poverty, want, barrenness, miscarriages cannot stop it. When you know the word, there are things you say from this word. Evil must pass out. Know who you are. Know what God has made available for you and know the word. Pastor Oedipe read the scripture at the beginning of this service. John chapter 5, 24 to 25. Verily I say unto you, he that hear my word and believe on him that sent me. What happened to that person? He has a way. Do you believe the word of God? The word of God is life. Has everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, poverty, shame, reproach, but is past. Oh, la, 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 Somebody say, I fast from where? From death to life. I'm alive. I'm alive. Strong. 
And verse 25. Now, the powerful word is verse 25. Verily, verily, I say to you, the hour is come, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Hey, wait, how can the dead hear? They say somebody is dead, and they say, in the name of Jesus. The hour is coming, and now is the time when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And they will hear, and they that hear shall live. Lazarus! And Lazarus, four days, was, oh, who is calling me? Four days, who is calling me? The hand is stiff, who is calling me? Lazarus! And he that year shall live. If you study this thing, it will bring everlasting life. It will bring strength. If you know this thing, this word, this word is quick. This word is living. The word of God is not slow. Agbo can help you. This word is quick. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. I think somebody was just hit by that right now. The word of God is quick. Know the word. Study the word. Study the word. Your Pami man cannot help you. Study the word. Stay on the word. Pray in the Holy Ghost this morning. Make it deeper. Island Church, make it deeper. Oh. Oh, I stand on the word. I know who I am. Somebody make it deeper. There's a connection between the spirit, the language of the spirit, and the way. Speak his language. Every prophecy this morning find expression in my life. I live a life of glory. I have in excess everything I need for life. We move from glory to glory. The word of God is living and active in me. I have the word. I have the word. I speak the word. I live the word. I have the word. I know the word. The word of God is a life. In Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Is anybody in church this Sunday morning? Pastor, thank you for this word. But I need to reconcile. I want to move close to God. I want to know the word. I want to serve him. Lift up your right hand. Let me pray for you if you are such a person. Now that you have decided to give your life to Christ, I would like you to say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me by your blood. Make me whole. I confess Jesus, Lord over my life. No more to sin, no more to the devil. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Congratulations. You have now joined the family of God. The host of heaven is celebrating and rejoicing with your decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. We would like to hear your testimony, know more about you, pray for you, and reach out to you. Please share your details with us in the comment section of this broadcast. You can private chat us on Facebook and WhatsApp using the details below, and our online team will be waiting to engage with you immediately. Alternatively, you can type the displayed link and fill your details or send us an email at salvation at islandchurch.com.ng and our team will also reach out to you. God bless you.